Okay, in today's video, we're gonna talk about this 3D printed speaker box here in front of me. Uh, it's something I've been working on here for the last week and a half, two weeks or so. Um, it's been constructed mainly of PLA along with some clear acrylic on the back. Uh, I used WinISD to come up with the internal dimensions along with the port dimensions. This was all based around the TS parameters that I pulled last video on this speaker alongside some other desired parameters for the box. So the main purpose of today's video is kind of to look at the differences of the free air responses of this speaker compared to a box that was actually designed for this speaker and we'll kind of see where things change and how they change. Um, so in typical fashion we'll jump right into a build montage but before that a word about today's sponsor, which is an addition to this channel, it's PCBWay. Um, PCBWay offers a wide range of top quality services including 3D printing, CNC, flexible and rigid uh, PCB manufacturing. They provide excellent support to entrepreneurs, startup, and established businesses alike. As a registered user, you can take advantage of a first-time user offer of five dollars off your initial order of 10 100 by 100 millimeter PCBs which means you will pay zero dollars for the PCBs and only have to cover the shipping and handling to your address. I can vouch for PCB Way as I've used them on numerous projects up until now. If you're looking for a professional and exceptional PCB prototyping service head over to PCBWay.com today to get started. On to the build montage.
Okay, so we've seen this guy uh, be put together. Um, now time to talk about it. When it comes to designing a speaker box, there are a lot of factors to consider in order to achieve optimal sound quality. I've designed, I wouldn't say a lot, but quite a few speaker boxes, but mainly out of wood, so 3D printing them is kind of new to me. But I do know that the shape and size of the enclosure plays an important role as long as as well as the port configuration. Um, the materials used also play a big role, which is why I went with the PLA and the um, clear acrylic on the back. PLA being a stiffer material along with the three millimeter thick acrylic just seemed like it was a stiff enough box to withhold any distortions that may try to happen from sound pressure inside. To prevent any leaks, you've seen that I had the blue tack that I put around the speaker here. That's just because it can cause chuffing and other undesirable characteristics if you have leaks around the speakers. And since I was testing this with a precision microphone, I wanted this to be as accurate as I can get it. In this version, I aimed for about 150 hertz. This was due to the size limitations of the printer bed, along with with trying to keep a desirable ratio between the cone and the port. So as the tuning frequency falls, the port length needs to increase. And I was getting some absurdly long port lengths, and I don't know that I would have been able to fit them even on a very large printer. In future iterations of this though, I think I may try to maybe do a zigzag or put some bins in it, maybe do like a T-line type scenario. Um, I'll just play around with it, kind of see what I can get figured out to get it to fill, fit on the current build plates that I have. Um, but all of the design decisions that I made were made with the goal of achieving the best sound quality that I could get. And I'm really pleased with how that it turned out and how it performs. But we'll get into some real listening testing here in just a minute. So yeah, we'll look at some charts and then do some sound listening. Okay, so looking at the charts here on the screen, the purple line represents the free air while the orange line represents the speaker box. The lines traded place, as you can see, until about 10 hertz, at which point the speaker box absolutely shined up almost 35 decibels in spots until just around 800 hertz. After 800 hertz, they started swapping places again until just about 3000 hertz at which point the free air speaker performed better by about 15 hertz. On average though, the speaker box was about 10 decibels louder or close to four times as loud, if I'm reading these graphs right, as the free air speaker if we was to average the entire response. So the area under the curve was substantially improved for the entire listening range. Now it's worth noting that these testing conditions were not ideal as the input tone hasn't been quite standardized yet is how I test for it. I'm working on a better solution and possibly a DIY sound booth for more accurate testing in the future. So I will let you know on that. Overall though, from the listening test, the speaker sounded much louder and fuller than before after I put it inside of the enclosure, just setting it in, taking it out. Um, this was with the same input volume, and it's actually been surprisingly usable as just a small office speaker. I've been using it here for about a week as a small office speaker. It would benefit greatly from a pair to go with it, so I could listen in stereo sound as I've just been listening off one channel, and it, it's kind of annoying. Um, that being said, I do think it would be worth getting a DSP to fine-tune the speaker even further. With some tweaking, I believe this speaker could really shine. But that's about 
all I have for today on this. So yeah, if you've made it this far, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and please check out PCB Way. The link will be right down in the description. Um, they're going to really help this channel move forward, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity that they gave me. So, yeah. Have a good one, guys.